Hi, welcome to SFG Cards and Craft. Today I'd like to show you how I did this little card. Um, this card is actually uh, is from a new stamp set for me. It's uh, Hog Heaven by My Favourite Things. Uh, I've also used the Dynamics dies on this one. There they are, they're showing them there. Um, this is actually the first card that I've actually made because I haven't had the dies for very long. I did actually attempt to make one by fussy cutting but it really wasn't very successful so I had to wait until I could actually get the dies and the dies aren't always available when the stamp set's available so I thought well I'll get the stamps first and then I'll get the dies when they're available so this is what I've done but I, unfortunately I had to wait quite a while before they, they became available. Uh, now just using VersaFine and my uh, homemade stamping press that I've actually made I've, I've done a video for this one recently so uh, if anyone's interested in how one of these stamping presses is made um, just check out my video from probably less than a month ago now and I am stamping the two little pigs or the, the the whole back end of the pig and the face of the pig twice and the fence twice but I, I don't need the two pigs twice I only need one of each plus two fences and I thought I'll eventually I'll use the other two pigs so I've just done the whole lot all in one rather than taking those off first and just die cutting. <coughs> I've decided a lot of times now if uh, if it's a fairly complicated or time consuming sort of item to actually uh, paint I've decided that I'll do the die cutting first. So many times when I've actually done the die cutting after I've actually painted and somehow even though I've taped the die onto the, the painted, painted uh, stamped image it's moved or I've put it on crookedly and it just doesn't die cut right so I've decided I'll die cut it before it's painted that way if it's wrong I'm not wasting all that time painting it and I can just re-stamp re and die cut another one. Um, now what I'm doing here is I've taken a, a light grey textured card base this is actually only a cheap paper it's, it's not any specific brand of paper it's just something that I actually had there it's a cardstock sorry and I'm placing on top of that one of my uh, Canson watercolour papers, the 185 gram, because I need to cut a window through both pieces uh, together so that they line up perfectly. And just using the Mama Elephant uh, So Fancy Creative cuts the largest circle that's in there. It's actually a, a dotted circle, both sides of the, the uh, die cut, it actually cuts uh, little dots, or sorry, presses little dots. Um, I haven't really used those very often. I, I mostly use just the the one that's the cross cut one out in the, on the outside of that pack which is what I, all my bases are actually cut from because um, I mainly bought that one oh, a couple of years ago now for um, because I was having trouble with my cutting machine my uh, um, the one that I actually used to cut the paper with the paper cutter it wasn't cutting straight or, or something wasn't going wrong all the time and I'd go to cut these things and they wouldn't cut straight so I decided that's it I'm going to get a die and just die cut everything so it just worked out so much better. I've saved so much paper and so much hair pulling. <laughs> um, okay, now here I'm painting the little pig. Now, unfortunately, I did start with the wrong colour. I started with the um, Victorian velvet and tattered lace, sorry, tattered rose mix, but that's what I don't want that just yet. I'm going over the whole pig with the sponge sugar on both, both of the little pigs first. Sponge sugar, so that's just a, a, a coating over the whole lot first. So that's what I went back in there and just done this, uh, did the sponge sugar. It didn't matter too much because I do have to come in later on with the shading with the uh, tattered ro rose and the Victorian velvet. Sorry, I'm just reading this off my list here. So that's all I'm doing there at the moment. Um, now, the little, I'm well, just doing a little bit more touch up around with the um, sponge sugar. <coughs> I just putting those aside to dry a little bit. I do come in later on and dry them with the heat gun anyway. Um, oh yes, I'm picking them up now. I decided to do them now. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a cold and I'm getting over some bronchitis at the moment, so uh, I've got a bit funny in the throat. And now I'm just using a side load on. I'm not sure if that's a three a sixteenth brush or a quarter inch brush but what just a small angle brush it really doesn't matter you can actually use a flat brush as well to do what I'm doing here but I just prefer to use the angle brush so just bringing in uh, just a side load of um, this is actually a, a brush mix of Victorian velvet and tattered rose 
Um, so basically all I've done is just picked up the two different colours one after the other on the on the brush together and just using that. So I've just got them um, pressed onto the palettes off to the side there sort of close by each other and just picking up just pick up the one then pick up the other one on the brush and just going just down the side so that the light appears to be straight on and have to put some under his little butt cheek oh, just going over because I had some lines there the uh, sponge sugar wasn't quite dark enough uh, because of the Victorian velvet is quite dark and with the tattered rose mix I was trying to tone it down a little bit with the tattered rose but it didn't quite work as I was hoping so I've just gone over the body where it needed it with the sponge sugar a second time um, now coming in to do the fence I'm using tea rose sorry <laughs> get that wrong tea dye and uh, rusty hinge just brush mixed as I indicated there with my finger going backwards and forwards now when I, what I say by brush mix is I've actually got these two pressed onto the palette side by side fairly close together side by side and all I do is I just pull the brush between the two of them like start off and for example tea dye pull it into rusty hinge and then back to tea dye again just do that a couple of times and it just picks up a reasonably even amount of the colour and I do have to do two coats on these fences with the same colour so I, I do the two fences because I need two so I'm doing those both first actually I might leave you with a little bit of music now and uh, just see how we actually go and uh, I'll, I'll be back soon, thank you back again briefly um, I thought that the little butt on the little pig was so cute that it needed a tattoo so I'm just putting a little heart tattoo or stamping on a little heart onto his little butt cheek I just thought it looked cute um, so that's all I've done there um, now with the fence I'm actually coming in with a uh, ground espresso just to do some shading under the rails that are there just under the rails uh, and then I'll come back in again later on with the tea dye rusty hinge mix and just go over the uh, the palings again. I leave the rails as they are because after all they would have light on them if there's shade underneath them they've got light uh, so I, I just thought that that's the way it would be so that's the way I've done it. Okay back to the music
Hey, I'm back again. Um, I'm, what I'm actually doing here is just cutting the acetate or just now gluing the, the acetate down um, and I'm going to be using wet glue around the actual uh, the aperture, the actual hole that's cut out there uh, mainly because I'm going to be slipping the two little fences inside there so I want it to remain wet. If I put the uh, scotch gun, uh, the, the scotch tape in there, the ATG gun scotch tape, I wouldn't be able to slip them in. So that's why I've actually used the scotch only on the outside of the uh, acetate and the wet glue inside. And I'm putting the fences, I've got to sort of work fairly quickly here because I don't want that glue to dry around the circle before I actually get these two fences in. Well, one fence actually has, has slipped and the other one's stuck on top. So and just lining it up a little bit straighter than it was. Uh, unfortunately there's not a lot of grass down below. Uh, it would have been nice to have that just showing a little bit more grass but if I lifted it up any higher there would be a hole there. So unfortunately I couldn't do that but not to worry. I probably could have only done partial cutting and uh, left it a little bit longer the grass underneath but I didn't sort of think of it at the time. And just sticking the little pig on him. I've got him standing on the the top, uh, on the on the actual fence. I've got him standing on one of those rails, the top rail, or oh, sorry, the bottom rail, the, the bottom rail of the t the two rails that's there. I've got him standing on the bottom one. Otherwise, I wouldn't have him. It would be sort of sitting with his with his eyes barely on top of the fence. So I thought well, best to have him standing on the rail. And after I assembled the card, I thought it looked a little bit plain I guess so that was when I decided to come in and put some sky and some grass in but up until this point I hadn't I, I was only going to leave the card like this just with the uh, sentiment on it but after assembling it I thought oh that's a bit plain for me I like to have the cards covered so um, anyway using the uh, grasses this is my go-to grasses that I use from the whimsy sketched elephant stamp set and just using the lawn fawn noble fur ink and I just put a row of grass along the bottom there. I didn't actually use a pencil to uh, draw a line across so it's all just done sort of freehand along there. So it came out reasonably straight which has sort of surprised me because I'm hopeless at getting things straight. I need a guideline to go by usually. So look I'll leave you with it. I do come back in also with the uh, my um, Avriel uh, pierced cloud stencil that I've actually made to do this, the uh, clouds in the sky. So I'll come back after that's all done, okay? Okay, I'm just putting on some sentiments now and I, I decided that I'll put on, uh, I'm using the oink and the squeal from the actual Hogs Heaven stamp set, it's got uh, those little sentiments in there and I'm also using, which I haven't shown yet, but I'm using from a lawn fawn stamp set called Chirpy Chirp, there's a word translation in there and I'm actually going to use that on here as well, so translation is birthday, happy birthday, sorry, so I put oink oink and there's squeal, but I do put a comma in between the two inks. Mm. I'm just using the uh, VersaFine Onyx Black Ink here too, that's all I'm using. And apologies for my hair getting in the way, I, I don't know what happened there, I think my camera has probably been shifted a little bit and um, I'm sort of leaning over a little bit further than usual, so, uh, and there's the Chirpy Chirp stamp set that I'm actually using. I don't have the die sets for this, but 
I bought this stamp set mainly for that word translation. And I've used um, the, the Happy Birthdays, that, that's actually came from uh, Hang In There, Lawn Fawn Hang In There stamp set. And there's the card pretty much finished. I, I do actually put some joggle eyes on the little pig, which you can see in the photograph at the end. And uh, I put a, a white card behind the pig, like just for the inside of the card. So look, if you like this, please subscribe and uh, hit that like box. And I will be back before too long with some more cards. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.